So let's then move on to qualification. What are the qualifications of auditors? Qualification of auditors. Who qualifies to be an auditor? Qualification. Now, the auditor who qualifies must first of all be a member in good standing of the Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Kenya. Member of ISPAC. One qualification is must be a member of ISPAC. must be a member of ISPAC. Then one must have a practicing certificate to be eligible to be for appointment. One has to have a practicing certificate. The auditor must hold a valid practicing certificate that is issued by the Institute of Certified Public Accountants of Kenya, demonstrating their competence and adherence to professional standards. Three, relevant experience. One must have relevant experience and expertise. Relevant experience, relevant expertise. The auditor should possess the necessary skills and knowledge to perform the audit effectively, considering the size and complexity of the company or the entity. That's why you are appearing in this lesson, so that you can gain the skills, you can gain the knowledge. At the end of the training, you will qualify for membership of this pack. After then, after that, you will get a practicing certificate. To get a practice certificate, there are also requirements. So at the moment, candidates, you are gaining knowledge, skills, which will continue even after your training of uh, the CPA course. So one must demonstrate uh, relevant skills, knowledge in accountancy and auditing. For one to qualify to be an auditor, one must have relevant experience and relevant expertise. For independence. Independence. The auditor must be independent of the company being audited. The auditor must be free from any relationships or interests that could compromise their objectivity. Five, good professional standing. For one to qualify to be an auditor, one must be of good professional standing. The auditor must have a clean disciplinary record. That's what it means, good professional standing. The auditor must have no history of professional misconduct or ethical violations. That's the meaning of good professional standing. No record of misconduct, no record of indiscipline, no ethical violations. So these are five key qualifications. One, membership of ISPAC. Two, practicing certificate. Three, relevant experience and expertise. Four, independence. Five, good professional standing. And I've explained what that means. Good professional standing means one must have no record of misconduct, professional misconduct, 
one must not have uh, violated ethical standards qualifications we move on to these qualifications what disqualifies one to be an auditor now the company's act outlines several circumstances under which an individual or firm is disqualified from being appointed as an auditor one such circumstance is um, being an employee of the company to be audited officer or employee officer or employee officer or employee what does that mean now an officer or employee of the company or its holding company or subsidiary company is disqualified to work as an auditor of the company if one is an employee of the company or an officer of the company then such a person cannot qualify to be an auditor of the company business relationship business relationship what does that mean a person who has a business relationship with the company such as being a partner or being a director or being an employee of a firm that has material business relationship with the company is disqualified financial interest the third thing that can or circumstance that can disqualify one is having a financial interest a person who has a financial interest in the company or its holding company it could be one of the companies in the group a group of company or even subsidiary company is also disqualified and that includes owning shares in a company or owning debentures or being a creditor or having a loan guarantee from the company if you have a loan guarantee from the company you cannot be an auditor of the that company or you have shares in a company you cannot that's what you mean by financial interest having financial interest if you have financial interest in a company then you cannot be appointed as an auditor of the same company in which you have financial interest then we have family relationships family blood relationships a person who is a relative of a director or a relative of a key managerial personnel of the company is likewise disqualified so if you have a director say emmanuel manucho and emmanuel manucho has a wife who is an auditor if manucho is a director in company abc limited manucho's wife cannot be appointed as a an auditor of company abc limited because of family relationship a person who is a relative could be a wife a spouse could be a sister or 
Um, so this is family relationship, we, which can be broken down into two. We have blood relationship and uh, marriage relationship. Because uh, spouses, those are not blood related by blood, but they are but they are related by marriage, all right? So, family relationship is also also one circumstance that can disqualify one to act as a noditor. Then. This is one, two, three, four. The fifth circumstance is fraud. 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 If one is convicted of fraud, convicted of fraud, convicted of fraud. A person who has been convicted of an offense or who is involved in fraud or who is dishonest is also disqualified. A person who has been convicted of an offense involving fraud or dishonesty is disqualified. Insolvency and bankruptcy. Insolvency or bankruptcy. Now an insolvent or a bankrupt person is also disqualified. A bankrupt person is one who is unable to pay his or her dues when they fall due. It could be a person or it could be a, a firm. So a firm that is bankrupt or insolvent is disqualified. There may be other disqualifications, like where the act empowers the cabinet secretary to prescribe additional disqualifications through legislation. But what is important to note in relation to qualification and disqualification of auditors is that Qualifications and disqualifications are designed to ensure that auditors are competent, independent, and ethical. And non-compliance with these requirements can result in the appointment being declared invalid and may lead to disciplinary action against the auditor. But ultimately, the goal is to promote transparency, accountability, and also trust in financial reporting.